Welcome to Being a Successful Leader with Carl Welty. Carl is a leadership pioneer with years of challenging leadership and consulting experience. Here's Carl with some valuable insights, practical and proven methods for being a successful leader. Greetings, uh, Carl Welty here, the host of our podcast series entitled uh, Being a Successful Leader. We have uh, three imperatives we work on through the 26 episodes. Uh, these are imperatives that I think are just uh, well imperative for successful leadership. Uh, the first is uh, uh, being a skillful, self-aware leader. And that uh, particular area of emphasis, we just concluded with the last episode. Uh, in this episode, we start on the uh, initial episode for the second imperative, and that's formulating and executing a sound strategy. And then after this uh, area of emphasis, we move on to the third and final uh, imperative, and that's uh, building a, a culture of commitment, a, cu a culture that's going to drive toward and, and uh, make it happen with this sound strategy. Okay, 26 episodes, each one 15 to 30 minutes. Today's topic is uh, the beginning of the uh, sound strategy uh, area, and we start off with an overview of my strategic framework model. And this model serves you very, very well on an ongoing basis, whether you initially have never really taken a whack at uh, developing a sound strategy, uh, and by that I mean both your identity, who you are, and wh why you exist, and, and uh, what you stand for, as well as the direction, your, your, your strategic direction, you're creating your desired future state and heading that way. And then the all important one of executing, uh, which many organizations fall down on. So whether you, this is your first shot at it or you're, uh, you, you've taken it before and done pretty well, uh, this, uh, framework gives you an ongoing, uh, methodology, practical proven methodology on how to, uh, keep going with your sound strategy to update it, refresh it. As things change, I call it a strategy machine. Once you get started, uh, you, you you circle back and you, you keep looking out ahead and then taking the next steps, and it serves you in all those uh, uh, capacities. Okay. Before we – and what I'd like to do today is, is to kind of uh, move you around the strategic framework, uh, touch bases with what I call the three dimensions, identity, direction, and, and execution, explain a little bit about each, and then in the following episodes – We'll, we'll dive into each dimension and the particular uh, uh, material uh, that's that's covered in each. Uh, the uh, episodes would cover uh, the specifics of each of these. Um, and you have a lot of hands-on uh, opportunity here to begin to really understand and to apply this uh, strategic framework. And by the way, uh, recommend highly that you get my book. I hate to talk these things, you know, but uh, this is important to, if, if we're really going to strive to understand and use this uh, model or any of the stuff we talk about. And the book that pertains to this particular uh, uh, piece here is uh, Making and Fulfilling Your Dreams as a Leader. Making and Fulfilling Your Dreams as a Leader. And you can get it on my website, wealthy.com. And scroll over to our, or go over to, uh, click on, uh, leadership resources, scroll down to, uh, the, the books. You can click on, uh, making your, or, or, or making and filling your dreams as a leader and then pick the uh, vendor, uh, which is the uh, publisher, the Ewing's Publishing or, uh, the, uh, Barnes and Noble or Amazon. OK, and it takes you right to the page and go from there. And I think I think it's a nice compliment. We can talk about things here and maybe uh, enliven a little bit the, the the book kind of stuff. But the book provides a lot of details, examples and that sort of thing that we can't do on this podcast. So you're highly encouraged. So before we uh, take a quick overview, a quick trip through the uh, framework, the strategic uh, framework, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh so what I think are some very salient things about the importance of strategy. Um, there's a seminal work by Kuzis and Posner, Jim Kuzis, who I know, and Barry Posner. And uh, they're now in their sixth edition. They call this the Leadership Challenge. Uh, I recommend the book to you. It's a nice, nice uh, overview of, of, of leadership. Um, and anyway, they, they come up with uh, five uh, practices of exemplary leadership five practices of exemplary leadership. I'll go through them. Model the way. Second one is inspired to serve vision. Third is challenge the process. The fourth is enable others to act. And the fifth is encourage the heart. 
model the way, inspire to share vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and encourage the heart. Now, I bring this up because in our series here, the three uh, uh, imperatives we go through, we really do a lot of hands-on work to enable you to implement and follow uh, these five uh, practices. The uh, first uh, uh, imperative that we just finished was the uh, skillful self where you would definitely hits dead center and modeling the way in terms of values and self-awareness and, and, and all of that. The second one, uh, the strategic framework, which we're just starting, really hits all five. Uh, it does a lot in terms of modeling the way, which is a lot about values and so forth. Certainly a lot on sharing, a, uh, inspiring a shared vision. Also in challenging the process, what is going on? What kinds of strategies do we need to move ahead? And also, as you look at your strategies, you need to look at your internal environment and what's the capability you have to move ahead, enabling others to act. And then, of course, the encouraging heart, uh, they meant uh, giving heart to heart. And um, that would fit in there, too. And the third and final area of emphasis, the one on uh, building a culture of commitment, it certainly hits inspired to share vision uh, as, as you work with uh, individuals there and uh, provide clarity on what's expected. And then uh, certainly the last two, enabling others to act and encouraging the heart. So anyway, I want I bring that up because uh, you know it's and they have some specific things in their book, but it's a lot of it is conceptual, and I think what we do here we complement that work and gives us a nice framework uh, to apply a lot of this practical know-how that I'm trying to help you uh, engender. Okay, uh, so that's a nice uh, uh, tie to a uh, very popular book on leadership. Now a couple of uh, significant pieces of research. One is uh, uh, put in a book by uh, Jim Collins and, and Jerry Porras. It's called Built to Last. And this was a major finding some years ago. Or what they did is they summarized their research in the book on what they called the successful habits of visionary companies. Successful habits of visionary companies. And the big ta-da of all of this, the big finding was that these six, and they compared like number one and two in industries. They took a, a, a lot of industries and compared the, the number one leader with the rest of the pack, especially number two. And what they found, the main conclusion is that the successful organizations, the leader organizations, they both, what, what the authors call, preserve their core, what I call as we go into the model, identity, preserve the core, the core being identity. And the second is they stimulate a progress, what I call setting direction in the strategic framework. So they took a care of their, their core ideologies, uh, which, which as we'll talk about uh, as we go along, are fairly fixed, your identity, uh, purpose, and, and core values. Uh, but the rest is stimulating progress. You can't, you cannot, you can't sit on that. You got to go out and do stuff. On the other hand, when you go out there and just develop strategies without a base, without a, a rudder, uh, you know, you're able to get uh, whipsawed back and forth. So you really need both. And that was a, a key, key finding. And certainly in the strategic uh, model, you're going to uh, cover uh, both uh, uh, the um, pieces there. Uh, the second uh, research piece I'd like to uh, talk to you about was done by, uh, again, our, the authors, Jim Kuzis and Barry Posner, the ones I mentioned at the Leadership Challenge at the outset here. And what they they have an instrument called a leader uh, leadership practices inventory, and uh, they uh, build it around these five practices I mentioned to you at the outset of this episode. And uh, they have found, and and they've been at this a long time, that over thirty years across the globe, organizations of all sizes, all sectors, all organization levels, and they have found, guess what, the number one uh, deficiency. Uh, that leaders have is in the strategy area, in the strategy area, really being able to do the things we're going to be talking about in the strategic framework. Uh, and why is that, you ask? Uh, well, as I think about it, uh, I, I come up with several reasons why strategy is the number of weak, weakness. And, and by the way, by far, across all these dimensions I mentioned, uh, uh, for leaders, one is that leadership is less tangible it's less hands-on than the uh, other categories of work that we talked about in earlier episodes. 
the three categories of organizational work I list are leadership, management work, and technical work. Technical work being the most hands-on, the most, you know, uh, tangible and that sort of thing. Management work is more hands-on than leadership, and there are practices and things there. Uh, but the, the point I'm making here is that leadership is the least tangible, and most of us uh, like to uh, uh, get our hands on things, okay? Uh, the second uh, reason I think that uh, formulating and executing a strategy is the number one weakness that the research uh, found for leaders is that there's a delay in determining results. Uh, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time with technical work, uh, you do something and there's the result. You know, you get kind of immediate feedback. Um, less immediate with management work, much more remote with leadership work. Could be a long time before it really develops. So that's another reason, delay in determining results. The third I listed for, the third is the fear of the unknown. It's, it's, it feels awful good to you know, be on top of things. And the technical work is very comfortable for most people. I call it the principle of technical priority. We, we've talked about that uh, earlier in one of the episodes that there's good human nature reason that people tend to do the technical stuff over the management and leadership stuff because of the reasons we're talking about. And so as leaders in your organization and so forth, you've got to make it matter for people to do management and leadership work, or you're going to have a, a, a leadership management gap, the difference between the amount of leadership and management that should be happening and the amount that is. So you need to attend to that, make performance matter, and also to coach and train uh, your managers, leaders, so that they can understand and, and know how to go about managing and leading. And the last of the four I have is they don't know how to do it. <laughs> and guess what? That's what we're talking about here. Uh, we're giving a, a framework here for you, for example, and how to do the the strategy part of your leadership role, which is a major thing. Because I think if you don't have a strategy, if you don't know your identity, who the what what you why you exist, what you stand for, and where you're going, how to get there, and that the rest of it is uh, doesn't make much sense. It's hard to align with things that you haven't defined, you haven't clarified. So that's why it's so vital. Uh, to me, it's the most important uh, management practice by far. Okay, they don't know how to do it, and we're going to help you with the uh, strategy part of how to do it, how to do it in this uh, uh, episode and 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 the following episodes. Okay, let's take a quick trip around my strategic framework. And by the way, if you have uh, the the book already, it's on page five. This the the picture of the framework, page five. Uh, if not, to get the book, you'll find that on page five and then we'll go going through the pieces of the book as we talk about it here okay so three dimensions here strategy formulation strategy execution the first dimension is identity established identity and again next chapter we'll begin to go to the specific pieces here uh, and and identity is uh uh why we exist and and what do we stand for uh why we exist and what we stand for. The why we exist is the purpose. And then the uh, what we stand for are core values. And that's uh, what we'll, next next episode, we'll talk about purpose. And then two episodes from now, we'll talk about how to clarify core values. Really important stuff. And identity, once you've really thought it through and, and uh, you and your perhaps leadership team and so forth, and you begin to live it, you just don't talk about it, you walk it, and you begin to live it, it's pretty fixed. Unless things change, you know, your business environment and that sort of thing, you need to reinvent yourself, or what have you. Pretty much it's pretty fixed. And it provides that base foundation for you to move out of home camp and, and get on the road and set your direction. So the second of the three, identity being first of the dimensions is set direction. And that consists of uh, a vision uh, and a, what I, you'll, you'll, I like this, I think I talk about a translatable actional vision, not a, not a pithy, uh, high, high abstract uh, vision, but something that uh, captures that. But then you, you have vision elements that allows you to take off and develop your specific strategies. And then behind your strategies, your, your actions. And that's why I call it a strategy machine. You want to, you know, as, as the months go by and years ago, you want to revisit that and update your, 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 uh, Strategic path, I call it, when we get there. Strategic path, your list of current strategies you're, you're shooting for, okay? That should always be refreshed. Um, 
And before you get to uh, setting direction, uh, and uh, we'll, we, after we leave the identity piece, uh, we'll talk about something called a situation analysis. This is something I have uh, come up with that, uh, and you would not periodically do this, but especially if you've never really done the quality thinking and interacting with your leadership team, you want to take the time out and really take a, uh, take a good a view of what is going on in your relevant environment. Your relevant binder is your external environment and your internal environment. And uh, when we get to uh, conducting a situation analysis, we'll talk about each. I'll give you some technique on how to go about that. And then what you do then is you're trying to narrow down. And uh, one of the key of strategy work is focus, focus, focus. You're trying to develop a focus of the critical the critical few uh, initiatives, the critical few areas of challenge and opportunity and trends that you really, you and your leadership team need to uh, beat in on and, and develop strategies around, okay? So that's what the situation analysis uh, does for you. And again, as you move ahead, Pierre, you want to come back and, and take another gl- uh, glimpse at your, your relevant environment, both external and internal. So again, with that, then you set your 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 vision and, and use each you know, your planning horizon will change based upon your industry and nature of your business. But usually it's about three years and then you re- refresh it and come up with a new one and so forth. I'll also talk a little bit more the next time. You could have an ultimate vision. Uh, not everybody does, not everybody has to and so forth. But once in a while, uh, there's a, a vision that's, you know, the your North Star. That's a really, it's beyond even your business. It even serves people beyond yourself in terms of the community and and uh, and people in general and so forth. And not for everybody, but if if it's there, we'll talk a little bit about it. And that also provides some vision for you, the ultimate vision, which you'll probably never attain, okay? But you will attain the the what I call the interim vision, these hunks of three, four years at a time. Okay, so we have established identity. Uh, again, that's uh, why we exist and uh, what we stand for. And then we move off of that, our base camp, and uh, develop a uh, translatable vision after we do a uh, quality thinking and interacting with our leadership team on the situation analysis. And then behind that, the necessary, the requisite strategies and actions to make it happen. Okay, the final of the three dimensions is the working the strategy or executing the strategy. And this is where many organizations uh, fall down. Uh, I don't think this is prevalent today as a few years ago, but probably still is. Uh, many uh, leadership teams go off and they have a good time and and they uh, perhaps have a consultant come in or whatever, and they develop a, a strategy, a, a strategic plan, and they put it in a binder and come back home and and it kind of falls by the wayside. We don't want that to happen. I don't care if you have a binder or not and that sort of thing. It has to be an ongoing living process, and we need to work the strategy. And in working the strategy, there are two parts. One is your leadership behaviors, you and your leadership team. There are specific things you need to do in modeling the way, in living the strategy, okay? Otherwise, it'll be just like those dusty binders, which you don't want. So so part of execution is uh, your, your uh, living the strategy, your behavioral considerations. And the other is operational considerations, helpful mechanisms, and when we get to that episode, we'll give you a lot of specifics there. Strategy meetings, uh, to devote some time to strategy and not, not what do we call the uh, mixed soup, stirring in with all the other things about, you know, the Christmas party and, and, uh, what happened yesterday and all that stuff. It needs to be separated and given the proper focus. Strategy meetings. Another operational consideration is hierarchy of objectives, how you cascade your strategy. If your organization has various levels, how do you work it down into the organization? And the last is measurement. How do you measure? How do you measure success here? And there are uh, ways of doing that. And uh, a balanced scorecard is one. We'll talk a little bit about that and give you references and, and that sort of thing. Okay, that's a quick overview uh, three dimensions again are establish identity, set direction, and work the strategy. Uh, and again, I encourage you to get the book, and you can we can go through this uh, together, and that would be the best way for you to understand and, and start using this. All right, next next episode will be on uh, purpose. Purpose. Why do we exist? How do you go about that? And the importance of that. 
Until then, T, take care of yourself. We'll see you next week.